sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. Now, I've made no secret of this. I unabashedly love, love Apple's education initiatives. It's a type of accessibility, of making technology more available and more approachable to more and more people. And yeah, sure, Apple will sell you an iPad for 300 bucks or an iPhone for 700 or a MacBook for 1100 or whatever. But Apple also makes tons of educational content available for free to people in schools and training through curriculum and at Apple retail stores, all for everyone and all for free, as in you don't have to spend a dime on it. We see coding as an essential literacy. We really think it's a way to help students think critically and also creatively. And when they do that, they also learn problem solving skills and they also become better collaborators. And we want students all over the world to have the opportunity to learn to code. And it's why we've created free curriculum for students of all ages. It's what I mean when I talk about the value of something being fundamentally different than just the upfront cost. It's something that I think gets lost in the vast majority of coverage. And it's why I'm incredibly grateful you all helped me make videos like these to try to do something about it. I'm Renee Ritchie and this is Vector. We built Everyone Can Code so that anyone who wants to learn how to code or basic coding concepts can. And part of our goal was to make it super easy for teachers for any grade or subject level to bring coding into their classroom. And the curriculum that we've built guides students through the Swift Playground app. That's Sharon O'Mara, Senior Director of Business Markets and Education Marketing Programs at Apple. So we're really excited that schools who already have the curriculum can now start using it with the students who have Macs as well. Back at WWDC 2016, Apple CEO Tim Cook brought Cheryl Thomas, Vice President of Software Engineering Operations, up on stage to introduce Swift Playgrounds for iPad, an educational development environment that made real programming using a real programming language, over half a million apps now built with it in the App Store and counting, accessible and approachable to beginners of all ages who are interested in learning the fundamentals of code or becoming coders to make those next million apps. Since then, over 2.8 million people have downloaded and over 5,000 schools have deployed Swift Playgrounds for iPad. And now, this week, for its second act, Apple is releasing Swift Playgrounds for the Mac. Built using Catalyst, the UI kit for Mac technology Apple released as part of macOS Catalina, it takes everything great about the iPad version and makes it fully Mac native. With the menu bar, sidebar and touch bar, resizable windows, a new code completion and help system, tabs, and a plethora, a plethora of keyboard shortcuts. Anything you do on the Mac version of Swift Playgrounds, you can do on the iPad version. The reverse is also almost true. You can't start augmented reality AR kit documents on the Mac because there's just no way to walk around with the motion sensor aware camera live view on the Mac like you can with an iPad. But if you started one on the iPad, you can absolutely edit it on the Mac. Everything else, including robot and drone support, basically all the third party stuff is there or will be there in short order. And using Catalyst is terrific, frankly, because the more high profile skin Apple has in the Catalyst game, the better it'll be for everyone and faster. Putting Swift Playgrounds on the Mac, period, is even more terrific though, because it makes for a very direct bridge to Apple's full on development environment, Xcode. And so that's where our developed in Swift curriculum comes in. The way that we've designed this is we do wanna have a continuum uh, for students and teachers who want to be able to take coding concepts but pull students along who want to do even more uh, and make that really accessible uh, for anyone. And hopefully, you know, we're doing our part in terms of helping schools uh, feel like they can bring coding in and it's not such a scary thing. The, having Swift Playgrounds on the Mac is so important because now we can reach our students who are both iPad and on the Mac uh, with coding and, and, and intro to coding as well. Not only can you move documents between Swift Playgrounds on iPad and Mac, you can cut and paste code from Swift Playgrounds on the Mac to Xcode. And that strikes me as so similar in spirit to iMovie or GarageBand, where you can learn all the fundamental skills you need to have a career using Final Cut Pro 10 or Logic Pro 10 at the very top of the video or music industries. 
And because it's the Mac, you can even run Swift Playground side by side with Xcode, either as an intermediary step, a way to quickly visually play around, or for people who are already developers to more easily create their own Swift Playground content for their kids or schools or the community at large. Coding from our perspective is about helping develop new skills. You know, we know that when students and teachers are engaged in, in their learning, you know, they discover more, they create more, and ultimately both are more successful. And so that's what we hope to do with our coding curriculum. Not to sound incredibly corny about it, but I'm gonna, it can help take anyone from their first tap to their first app. Swift Playgrounds for Mac is a free download on the Mac App Store, just like Swift Playgrounds for iPad is a free download on that App Store. And I'll link up all of Apple's education content in the description below. Again, education is everything, and that's one of the reasons I helped start Nebula. That's the streaming platform that I'm building with a group of other education -y creators like H Bomber Guy, Thomas Frank, Sarah Z, Second Thought, Low Spec Gamer, Polyphonic, CGP Grey, Kirkazot, and many, many more. We're building it because we want a place where creators can try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube. So for just $19.99 a year, a year, you get access to both CuriosityStream with acclaimed content like King, a film record from Montgomery to Memphis, as well as all of the videos and increasing originals on Nebula. Like Dave Wiskus' new Edith documentary, all about all of the sunglasses used by Tony Stark in all of the Marvel movies. By signing up, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create the kind of content that you really want us to create. Just go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and now Nebula as well. And enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. If you're coding, if you're interested in code, if you're teaching, if you have kids in school, basically, all of you, hit like if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you think about Swift Playgrounds coming to the Mac? <laughs> Thanks for watching, see you next video.